What is going on, Herd? Thanks for tuning into the video. Been a while since we chatted, it feels like. Last few videos have been edit videos, track releases. It's been a while. And since it's been a while, I feel like let's just get right into it today. The Rate and Review Your Subscribers Drift Track Series. It has to return. The track creators in this community are some of the most overlooked individuals in our community. Plain and simple, most overlooked and probably the most important without those creations that take hours and hours and hours to do. And then they just release it to the public and everyone hits download and that's all they have to do to play that awesome track easy for those creators to get overlooked. We are going to change that. The series is on the return. It is coming back. And actually, I already reached out to the community and got three tracks and recorded the entire video. However, I realized this was too opinionated the way that I had this thing set up. Long story short, this new system feels like I'm nitpicking. It feels like I'm being very critical. So what I wanted to do is go over this new system, a new grading system, explain to you what I'm looking at and why I'm looking at it. And also, I spent 26 hours collectively on PS4 and Xbox One creating the same map that is a perfect scoring map with no deductions on it. Now let's be clear, it's not that you need to structure your map just like this map. I'm just giving you examples and we're going to go over the grading structure on why this is a perfect scoring track. So first off, pretty simple all in all. Um, elevation changes are very, very um, frequent and very smooth. There's nothing crazy. You should only be slightly dropping a wheel, maybe a little bit on two wheels, but when you're jumping, that's actually a little bit too aggressive for elevation changes. Now, can you get around that every single aspect in GTA? No, you really can't, especially when you're in the trees like this and you kind of are, your track line is getting dictated by the uh, natural terrain. Elgato difficulties right away. We lost some daylight. Fantastic. Needless to say, this is a relatively short but very, very smooth track. This is meant to be a warm up track, something you hop on and get yourself warmed up. You got some long corners, you got some short corners, and you got a bunch of elevation to get yourself ready. Now, I would take this backwards because this track is meant to be taken backwards as well. It's designed to be taken both ways, but there's just too much to cover in this video to get into that. This track has a code name. It is Shoto North. Shoto North, Shoto simply means short in Japanese. On to track two, this is Chisai. Chisai just means small, and this is a small but very smooth elevation track. Now this is, I wouldn't say a higher skill track, as I'm straightening out and not linking it properly, but this is meant to be a challenging track in the case of if you fall off the side, you're gonna probably have to restance your vehicle. It's definitely gonna, definitely gonna mess your vehicle up. As you can see, heck of a drop off down there. Chisai is another track that was developed to be taken in both directions. It has minor elevation changes and it's meant to be more punishing when you fall off the side. So essentially you warm up down at the lower track and then you come up here and you rip up some laps. But again, we have so much to talk about here. Let's get into the grading structure. There's going to be five different aspects that we're going to be grading on in this rate and review structure, this new grading structure. Each of these five different categories will have four available points. Now of those four points, you can also get a zero and not earn any of them. Let's go over a couple of these categories shall we map placement natural terrain as you look around we utilize the foliage fantastically map size as you can also tell we utilized our props very very well and I will say this I didn't even use all 200 props I used 199 <laughs> But as you can see, we are now three tracks in here, and this one is more like a Gymkhana track, and this one is kind of, I wouldn't say for beginners, because I have a hell of a lot of fun down here. This is a great track to be on. However, not really a track, it's a course. It's a, you make your line, and you can do tight tandems, you can do long trains, you can just come down here by yourself and get some rips in. So I really, really wanted to add in something like this down in addition to those other two tracks. Basically give us some diversity. I wanted to diversify my creations and that's something I'm really trying to do. So that next category, map size. Map size is one of those big things. Is it small? Is it average? And literally for four out of four on the grading structure, it just says LZ compound big, meaning giant. This is gonna be another example, of course, of a giant map. Um, you might be saying, well, I mean, I've seen larger. 
Uh, well, we're not done. We have another track here, of course. We gotta bring it to the fourth. <laughs> what are you guys thinking this is? Now this is gonna be your more competitive line. You have an inside clipping point. It rips you out to an outside clipping point along this. Brings you on, you go on the inside of that tree, hug your rear end to here, another inside, and then you swing your rear end out to there. Also, you have the starting setup. I'd call it a chicane, but it's not a chicane. It's just a little barrier, but starts the same. Gives you that little bit of extra speed too to seg that front end on the inside clipping point. Yeah, this is a really fun track. You come down here and you uh, can really get your, your slides in. You really want to come in on the inside here, keep your speed, speed boosted through, miss that tree, and I did not miss the tree. There's so much to make this a tough competitive line, and that's something I really wanted to do. Four tracks on one, honestly, we're setting a standard here. I've seen two tracks on many different occasions. I built two tracks on PS4. It was the, like the second track I ever built on PS4 way back three years ago when it was just block train. The stunt tracks weren't even out yet. Three tracks is a little better. We've seen that recently, but four tracks. Four tracks is something else. The next two categories are track flow and elevation changes. Elevation changes, we're looking for numerous elevation changes, but not anything crazy, you know, dramatic where it's a dang jump drift inside of in every dang track. I'm looking for seven or more smooth elevation changes per track. And I'm also looking for a track that can be fully linked, a good flowing track. Now, again, you need to have those two things on top of the map size and on top of the, the really good placement and natural aesthetic of the map. Basically, the key here is just to utilize the map and the foliage in the uh, creator to really make yourself a beautiful looking map. So we're still missing four points. Well, what are those four points? Let's go over it right now. First off, a spectator's box or a judging booth, one or the other, something where people can stand and be off the track and be up elevated enough to where they can overlook the track. Four or more clipping points. Covered hard edges, meaning are the side of your maps completely just a hard edge where there's nothing you can just completely fall off the side of them. You need to cover those up to make the map look better. Of course, that's gonna go into your aesthetic and everything else as well. And then for the last point in the added details category is how diverse is the layout? Do you have a diverse layout? Is it all just one track? Is it all just one style? Is it all just one thing? Or did you incorporate in some diversity? Now, of course, we couldn't go short on this. We had to go five tracks, had to do her, had to do her. I mean, I used 199 props, so we had to do her. You can also lose some points. There's four available points to lose, and maybe this list will grow a little bit before I officially implement the structure. Basically, if you have bad checkpoints where it's constantly a wrong way sign, I mean, there's no getting around it. You're gonna have a wrong way sign 50% of the time on the drift tracks, most drift tracks anyways. Is your track really bumpy? Do you have hazards? Is your whole thing a hazard? Is there just too many hazards? I mean, this can be viewed as a hazard because it's so high here, as you can see. However, this is a tasteful hazard. This is something that's meant to be there. You come up and now you are much less hazard. So this fifth track is meant to be a training ground kind of. You see how it's elevated up higher. This one's meant to be a training to where you can sag those wheels, sag those tires off the side and not fall off and total your car right away. Again, just like every single track on this, this can be linked in both directions. You can take it from either direction, and at the top, there's quite a few different lines. Let's show you one. We'll just take one off the top. I don't know, I just think this is a super fun track. And like I said, it's meant to be gone in either direction. So you can just whip it around and start taking off in the other direction and have smooth links all the way around. And something I wanted to do for a long time was build Ebisu, like all of Ebisu on one map. And I realized that when you are recreating a map and trying to make a replica of anything, it's just, it doesn't work in your favor. It eats up all your props because you have to be so detailed. So what I figured is I will make a Black Sheep TV Ebisu. And that's what I did here. I mean, five tracks, guys, five tracks. This thing is huge. Never have I seen four tracks, let alone four tracks that are each detailed and each offer something different. That's a lot like what Ebisu is. Now, Ebisu has some long circuits where they're not really completely designated to be you know, uh, drift circuits. I just didn't want to waste a bunch of props on that when I could um, spend more on, on a sixth track here. That's driftable because we need six tracks. That's just how it has to go. Oh boy, yeah, we made her.
So this is another drift pad. This is the top drift pad. Uh, the very bottom one, the more Jim Connor style one. I call that one the basement, code name the basement. It's the lowest part on the map, hence why I got that. And up here, I just kind of call it drift land. Um, Ebisu obviously has a drift land. It's probably RIP, honestly. It's just a car park and has been a car park for a while. So this is literally a large enough map to where I needed to code name it. And yes, there is only six tracks. I know some of you were probably thinking in the beginning, oh wow, he's gonna make his own track and just say it's the best track ever. I'm not trying to talk big, I'm just trying to say the standard is about to be upped for the creators. And here's the big thing. I don't want to see a bunch of recreations of the same thing. So you got to have originality. You got to have diversity. And without that, you are not going to succeed in a high, perfect score. So I know everyone's going to be asking, when's this going to be released? Uh, where's the download link? Is this for PS4? Or is this Xbox One? I mean, it's for both consoles. This is the Hoonstar's home turf, though. So this is going to be an exclusive track for quite some time. However, you guys will get the opportunity to drift on this in a future event on both Xbox One and PS4. This is just something I want to keep exclusive and enjoy with my guys for right now, and that's the biggest thing. So when I release it, how I release it, all that, it's not even on my mind at this point in time. I just know that's going to be a big question that comes from you guys. I'm not going to be stingy with this thing, but I'm also not trying to just release it for anybody to download and uh, basically make a bunch of content with. Basically, the Black Sheep TV Ebisu, when it really comes down to it. And no, I'm not driving to a seventh track, okay? I'm not trying to get your hopes up. I'm just going back down to this one. Aside from swapping up your vehicle here and there, we spent hours and hours on this map on PS4, and no one seemed to get at all bored with it. We switched up vehicles three times. We brought in new people each time that we swapped up vehicles. This thing is groundbreaking. This thing is innovative, and this thing is definitely, definitely the next big thing in GTA Online drifting. That, and then we also went over the grading structure. You guys get a good idea of the grading structure now. It's going to be very hard to hit all of those grade points. It's going to be very, very difficult to hit them all. And like I said, you don't need a track with this kind of a layout where it's this structure. But you're definitely going to start needing multi-map uh, tracks to get a really high score. That's just plain and simple. Especially if you're using this upside-down stunt track, there's really no reason to only have one sole map anymore. Unless it's extremely innovative, either like a replica track of something in real world or something huge where it's like the Adam LZ compound where it's just a giant open track things like that those can still score very big but then you have to look at the natural aesthetic you have to look at your prop usage all of that so a lot of things to keep in consideration here guys if you enjoyed this video and you are hyped on this track and you want to come drift this hit the like below we will bring it out we are going to be holding an event on both consoles coming up you will get a chance to come out here and rip this thing up everybody will if you have not subscribed yet please subscribe to keep your eye open for the return of the rate and review your subscribers drift track series of course i hope you all stay happy out there please stay positive and we will definitely speak to you next time